Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jay. If this is your first time here, welcome. So today I have my first video on a series that I will be doing in 2018 and that is how to keep your wallet in style. And I basically will be talking about my personal story. I started off uh, very early in the fashion industry and I got into a lot of financial troubles. So I will take a couple of minutes to talk about that and also share with you five tips that helped me through the journey. So hopefully I can help someone out there if you are starting out your luxury collection hopefully this video will be helpful if you uh, you know are in debt and you're trying to get out of it then hopefully uh, you know the things that I would share with you can also help you so feel free to watch this as many times as you like feel free to start maybe a journal because I will continue to do these videos going forward and uh, you know hopefully I I can help you and that that's the goal so let me first start off by saying that I started in the fashion industry at a very, very young age. I can remember as young as four years old, just loving everything about fashion, runway models, the makeup, the shoes, the bags, you name it. I was completely obsessed. Uh, anybody who knows me would have thought that my mother was so into fashion, but that's not the case at all. It's actually completely the opposite. Uh, but I was intrigued by the whole industry and I knew that very early on that I would be a part of it somehow. So um, as I got older and as a preteen, I was able to uh, do some print work. I also had the opportunity at the time, Sears was very big, so I was at the time, um, I had the opportunity to be part of the fashion show. I was backstage, I was helping designers with the models and I saw how they were doing their makeup and just this whole adrenaline rush of a fashion show for me was fascinating. And um, you know, when I was a junior in high school, I knew that I had to make a decision if I was going to college and where. And I made a decision to not go to a university or a four year college. I wanted to get into the fashion industry right away. And I was born in New Jersey and that's where I graduated from high school. So either I crossed the bridge to New York City or you know, move to LA or Europe. And I couldn't afford to do Europe or LA, so I just decided to cross the bridge. And I graduated high school on a Thursday, and two weeks later, I had enrolled in a fashion merchandising school in Midtown, not FIT, just in case anyone is interested. I did go there for a couple of classes, I just didn't, uh, I wasn't thrilled about the school. Um, so it was just a regular school that offered the program and after 18 months, you were able to get a job. So that's what I wanted because I wanted to be a fashion buyer. That was my goal, be a fashion buyer. And when I started school, I just, I loved, I loved everything about the classes. I loved learning about fabric and colors, the latest fashion, and my assignments were to go to Saks Fifth Avenue, to go to Burdoff Goodman, to go to Bloomingdale's and understand the new hottest designer. And that for me was just amazing. Like I just loved everything about it. I did so well. And while I was in school, uh, someone very special to me had given me at the time a Louis Vuitton bag, which I will share with you uh, towards the end of the video. And I was just obsessed. I was just in love with the fact that one, I even got such a beautiful gift because never in a million years would I have thought that I can have a Louis Vuitton bag because I couldn't afford it. And you know, I was just so amazed of, of the structure of the bag and I loved the way that it smelled and I just loved carrying the bag. I just loved everything about it. And it just started this, um, I don't want to say addiction, but I just did this, this love and this passion to just keep getting more of it. And, you know, while I was in school, I ended up getting in an internship in Midtown as well for an amazing designer who designed couture hats. And I loved it. I didn't know anything about hats. And thanks to her, uh, Patricia Underwood is her name. I, I loved it. I loved everything about hats which is the reason why I wear them today um, but that was probably in August of 2001 and you know in September 2001 we all witnessed in the world um, the terrorist attacks of 9-11 and when I was at my job my internship in the early morning I, we heard that over the news that a plane had hit one of the towers and no one could believe it and we were pretty high up in this building where I was in Midtown and when we went outside um, unfortunately, myself and everyone who was there, we saw the second plane hit. And it was in that moment where I realized that we all knew that we were under attack and that thousands of lives were just lost. And, you know, for a 19 year old to see that or for anyone to see that, that was the most heartbreaking, the most shocking 
thing I've ever experienced to date in my life and it completely changed my mindset and anyone who was involved um, you know in, in the 9-11 attacks and you know all of us in New York City it was it was horrible it was absolutely horrible and I realized that my life can end in a moment's notice within seconds and through that experience you know I am grateful for everything that I have in my life but I realized then and I made a decision that if I wanted something I was gonna get it and I really didn't think too much about this or how I would get it and I devoted myself to the industry and here I was getting student loans for my tuition and I saw how easy it was to just sign my name that I figured that I can do the same with my credit cards and from one credit card I went to the other and to the other and I'm buying Louis Vuitton bags, Chanel bags, I'm buying the latest makeup, the latest um, shoes, the two three hundred dollar cashmere sweaters. I mean I'm a college student and I'm buying this stuff that I couldn't afford and before you know it years later I, I'm, I'm in debt and it wasn't until maybe I was 23 years old where I started getting collection calls because I couldn't pay my bills anymore and I wasn't making anything at that time you know anyone who's in the industry or knows about it you don't make a lot of money especially when you first start out and we're talking about 10 years ago so it was hard it was very difficult but I was in this journey of, of having this mentality that I needed to get that stuff now because you know anything could happen in my life and was that an ignorant way to look at life absolutely because that was my mentality and I really didn't think about this stuff I just knew that I wanted to be a part of an amazing industry and even though the industry got very got hit very hard because of 9-11 which all of them did but the fashion industry did more so than than probably others because no one wanted to fly to New York City we're under attack you know and I wanted to 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 be a voice and I wanted to to be part of that group that said you know here in New York you know we're not afraid and and this is what we do this is the fashion world this is how we look and this is how we 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 see ourselves you know and I just I spun out of control and there's just no other way to really explain it and some might think that it was an addiction I'm gonna say I don't know because it's not like I filed for bankruptcy, although it was in my mind, um, but I was out of control. So it was at 23 that I realized that I was $50,000 in debt and I didn't even make a quarter of that a year and I needed to get out of it. So I had to make some really tough decisions and I had to pretty much sell everything except for two items, which I will share with you at the end of the video. Um, but here are the five tips that I will share with you that have helped me through this journey because I can say that 10 years later, it was all worth it. And if it wasn't for that experience, I wouldn't be where I am today and I probably wouldn't have the things that I have. So hopefully this can help. All right, so the first tip that I have for you is know where you are today. This was very, very difficult for me, but I had to do it. If you are doing this journey by yourself or if you're married and you're doing this with your spouse, you have to take the time to be alone in private with a pen and paper and write everything down. Every area of my life at that point was in the red. My finances were shot. My health was 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 horrible. I gained, you know, a lot of weight because I was eating and drinking a little too much because I was depressed of where I was. My relationship ended. I was dating someone for a very long time and that ended. Um, I was renting. I, I had to go back to my parents' house. I mean, there was just so many things in my life that were in the red that I was embarrassed to face the truth, but you have to do that. So in order for you to make progress, you just need to know where you are. So make sure that you do that step for sure. The second one is decide what you want. And this is in reference to my first tip, you know, I had to make decisions of what was important for me and what I needed to do to get there and what sacrifices I needed to make. And at that moment, there was four things that I wanted and that was to get out of debt that was to uh, buy an apartment, that was to lose the weight, and number four was to get my collection back because I made a decision that I was gonna stay away from the beauty and the high fashion and focus on these luxury bags because I love everything of it. It just makes me feel amazing. And I'll take for example, Chanel and Louis Vuitton. A lot of us love these fashion houses, but you have to decide why. And for me is that I believed in Chanel and Louis. And if you know their stories, if you've seen the videos, watched the movies, these people work for other people and they took a chance and a risk 
to do what they believed in and that was their craftsmanship of designing um, you know a bag that will impact women's life or tweed suit or suitcases that would make traveling easier and for me I gravitate towards people who believe in what they they believe in and they did you know and they took a chance and they completely transformed all of our lives those who love and appreciate the Louis and the Chanel's and these are fashion icons that have lived for decades and will continue to do it so for me that was important because I'm proud to wear that to wear the Louis to wear the Chanel I'm proud of that because they believed in it and I would support that a hundred percent so decide what it is that you want you know I'm going to say that most of us are, are who, if you are watching this video you love the luxury world but you know that can go for anything whether that's you know buying a house or you know collecting watches or wine whatever it is the principle is still the same but decide specifically specifically what it is that you want number three is make a plan and do your research and this is something where I probably had tons of sellers remorse and that is because I didn't have a plan you know I didn't know what to do I wasn't taught personal finance in high school and I wish that I, I, I was taught that and I hope that high schools are not teaching this because we need to know how to do this stuff because this is what we need to move forward in life whether it's buying a business a house a car whatever it is if you don't know how to manage your finances you're going to be in big trouble and I'm uh, you know that's what happened to me I am proof of that I, I fell in the trap so I hope that high school um, you know schools throughout the United States and throughout the world are teaching this stuff because without a plan you can't do anything and I didn't know where to start so I had to basically learn and I was so broke that I had to go back to the library and, and learn and learn from scratch about finances and, and learning about uh, having collection and how I can sell it. But the one thing that I do regret was just not doing enough research on the bags that I had at the time because you know Fendi was huge, the color um, monogram print from Louis was huge back then, the McCarthy's were huge, Givenchy bags were huge. I mean these bags were amazing and were the latest styles then and I didn't do enough research to understand how much I could have sold it for and I was such in a, such a desperate situation that I just sold things for probably pennies to the dollar and I probably lost thousands but I was I wanted to get out of it and I wish that I would have taken my time to do that. So. If you are thinking of selling a bag or you know you're getting on this journey to get out of debt, know what you have, do the research, know the value, make sure that you talk to other people or just go online, definitely can do that and just get information so you, you don't go through what I did was you know seller's remorse. I, I absolutely know for a fact I probably could have gotten out of debt much quicker if I would have done my research. So that is a very important step. Number four is to take baby steps. You cannot go from point A to point Z overnight. It just doesn't happen. You will be discouraged because you know you have to understand that this takes time. Depending on what it is that your goal is. For me, it was getting out of debt, and fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money, especially for a twenty-three-year-old when I had zero experience in corporate America, and here I am trying to pay off fifty thousand dollars. So I had to take baby steps and for me it was that I had to take my lunch to work and I did it every Monday and then when I saw that I made that happen I gave myself a little star so then the second week I did two lunches a week and then the third week you know three lunches so uh, those were the baby steps that I took and I made sure to write it down and I made sure to write the result whether it was positive or negative uh, so then I can continue to be motivated because this does take a lot of time. It took me three and a half years working three jobs to get out of that mess. So baby steps are very important. And number five is to stay focused and be persistent. I cannot just, you know, talk about this enough. It is so easy for you to give up. There were numerous times where I wanted to give up. At 20, you know, 23 years old, I wasn't doing what a normal 23-year-old should do, which is start your career, have some money in the bank, go travel, spend time with your friends, go to the latest nightclubs. I didn't do any of that. 
I had to give up all of those amazing things and those experiences in my life in order for me to get out of the mess, you know, and that resulted in me being single for a long time, you know, my relationship had ended and I was away from the dating scene. I was away from traveling. I was away from buying bags. I stayed away from the mall. I stayed away from <laughs> department stores. If I needed something, I either went to pay less. Yes, I went to pay less or Walmart. I had to do whatever I had to do to keep my expenses at a minimum so then I can pay off my debt and my collectors because they were harassing me. And I will talk about that in future videos if you guys are interested. I can definitely talk about it. And you know, be creative in this process because it is a long journey. And for me, I'm a visual learner and I completely transformed my apartment at the time because one of the goals was to buy an apartment and I did at 25. And even though I had a mattress, it was fine, but I, I reached my goal and that was to buy my apartment. And it was my mattress and pictures of everything that I wanted at that time all over my walls. So whether that was getting out of debt, I printed out things that said getting out of debt and saving and I had pictures of how to save and retirement and cars and money and I had a vision board of the luxury bags that I wanted again in my collection in order and the ones that I wanted, the color that I wanted. I was so specific because I wanted to be surrounded by these visuals that would help me to stay motivated and I listen to motivational videos and and I I watch only YouTube videos about motivation I stayed away from anyone who was involved in fashion and beauty because I knew my weakness and that was going back to the stores and buying things I couldn't afford and you know I believe in vision boards and here I have an example of one of my vision boards and I just keep one of you know my health and you know things that I want to accomplish but then I also have a vision board for my luxury bags I have a vision board for money and career so all these things I made sure that I was surrounded by it so I can stay focused that is the key and if you are in a journey of starting your collection or if you have all these bags and you need to sell it you know the what it is that you want to sell and keep and I kept two items and one is the one that I had mentioned which is something that I got when I was in school and this is one of my pieces that I call it my unicorn pieces and this was my first Louis Vuitton bag and this has been with me for 17 years and I can tell you that she is amazing and I guess once you get into the whole luxury world you start giving you know these bags and shoes gender roles so she's a she and it was this bag and a payless bag that i use for three and a half years consistently without fail so i can stay focused because this is where it started for me and i just absolutely loved this bag at the time it was so popular and you can see how much i did use it but to be honest with you i still think that it's in pretty good condition I don't use her anymore, but this is a bag that I will never get rid of because this is where it all started for me. And then the second piece that I kept was this beautiful flip wallet from Dooney and & Burke. And I had actually talked about this in one of my Chanel unboxings because this was my first purchase with my first paycheck working in the fashion industry. And I was so proud of myself because I wanted to be in the industry for so long and the fact that I was able to accomplish that goal, that goal I was you know, able to purchase something. And at that time in the early 2000s, you were either a Dooney and Burke girl or a coach girl. And I first started with Dooney and Burke. I got into coach later on. But this was my first you know, flip wallet. And I used this religiously every single day for years. And I still think that it's in pretty good condition. Um, you know, for what it is, it's still good. And unfortunately, Dooney and Burke, I believe they went bankrupt, I think. They're not as popular as they used to be, but I absolutely love them. And, you know, I couldn't use my round coin points from Louis Vuitton. I couldn't afford it. So I used the back of this, and this is where I kept my coins. And you can see the residue that you get from that, which I had also talked about this in the video. But these were the two pieces that I kept in my collection, and I will always keep in my collection. These are my unicorn pieces, but they are sentimental to me because they mean something. So, you know, 
some people might think, wow, that's you know really shallow. It's not because these are the things that I want. So stay focused, be persistent, stay away from the haters. I don't care if it's your best friend for 40 years. I don't care if it's your mother, your father, your grandfather, your dog, your cat. I really don't care. You have to stay focused, make sure to stay away from the noise and I can guarantee you that it's so much sweeter on the other side. And I can tell you this and I'll leave you with this. Once you get to this side of the fence and you have the financial uh, you know, things that you need in place, whether that's cash flow, whether that's savings, emergency fund, proper insurance, whatever it is, and you want to start a collection, and I'm gonna take the example of luxury bags and shoes, price increases won't matter to you as much. Why? Because you're financially independent. And yes, they do go up in price. And yes, it's fantastic and amazing if you can get a great deal, because I do believe in pre-owned style, you know, styles. I have them, and I will probably talk about that soon. Um, but because you have the money, it's not gonna matter. And when I first purchased my classic Chanel, yeah, it wasn't $6,000 like it is today, but I'm on the other side of the fence, and I can say that I can afford it. And that's what you want. At least that was my goal, that I started to get my collection, but I know that all of my finances are in order and I have everything in place so then I can enjoy my luxury shoes and handbags. And that's the goal because I never want to go back to that place again. All right, guys, so that is everything for this video. I know that it was a little long. I hope that it was helpful in any way. Please share with me your comments, any thoughts, questions. I will be more than happy to talk about it. It took me a really, really long time to get to this place, but it was totally worth it. So as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already, and I'll see you very soon on my next video. Bye.